In the piece following the Dutch War of Independence from Spain, the intricacies of courtship and of lovemaking have become one of the most popular subjects amongst Dutch genre artists. And the use of the rules of perspective to enhance the dramatic effect of paintings, including even notions of love, became a popular technique and one at which Jan Vermeer excelled. In 1436, Alberti had written a treatise on new methods of showing distance in painting, in which the basic rules of linear perspective were described. This meant that artists like Vermeer could not only produce works where a picture had a very realistic sense of depth, but where perspective could also serve the needs of symbolic representation as well. In our rather hard-nosed world, this concept is very strange. Just what has the use of perspective got to do with love? Let's take a look. In a lady standing at a virginal, you see a fairly simple scene. The lady in a formal satin dress looks out at us standing by a virginal, a type of small harpsichord. But above her is a picture of Cupid holding up a card. On the card is the figure one an allusion to love and faithfulness. And there has always been a strong connection between music and love. In fact, if you think about the songs you know there still is. The word virginal is said to have been coined because the instruments were designed to be played by young women, a special skill to be used during courtship. The painting on the virginal's lid is the full version of the painting in the gilt frame up on the wall. Nature has a masterpiece, as is a beautiful woman. But Vermeer used every aspect of the painter's repertoire to strengthen the theme of his compositions, and that included perspective. If we draw one by one the orthogonals in the scene, our eye is subliminally drawn to the vanishing point where they all meet. In the centre of the painting, and also close to the heart of the young lady. The tying in of the characters of the actual structure of the scene was a very important aspect of 17th century art. The music lesson also has a significant use of perspective. But before we look at this, the painting may be called the music lesson, but who exactly is teaching whom? The gentleman has his mouth open, but is he instructing the young woman or singing as she plays? The mere leaves us to guess. If we draw in the orthogonals, we see again the eye is drawn to the heart of the painting, the young woman playing music for her companion. Many have wondered how Vermeer managed the amazing degree of accuracy in his perspective scenes. In fact, restorers have found the use of nothing more complicated than a pinhole, from which Vermeer would have stretched a secure string, maybe covered in powdered chalk, to mark off his guiding lines. There are other symbols of love here. Again, we have the virginal and the use of music in courtship. And the painting to the upper right is a depiction of a Roman called Kimon, who was imprisoned by chains and kept alive by his daughter. The symbolism may be of a man chained by love and succored by the woman of his affections. But lastly, what's going on in the mirror? This is where Vermeer is playing some tricks. Firstly, for us to see the lady's face at all, the mirror would have to be tilted forward another 30 degrees. And right at the top of the mirror you can just see the feet of Vermeer's painting easel, which of course subtly introduces a third character into the painting. And why is her reflection looking to her right, when in fact the lady herself is looking forward? Restorers have found part of the answer. Originally Vermeer painted her looking to her right, with her companion leaning closer towards her, and then had second thoughts. But why he changed one and not the other is one of those things we'll never know. <laughs>